Previously on Tales of Arise. I feel so bad for the voice actor. I really do. Imagine just how humiliating and embarrassing voicing this fucking owl must be. And now back to Boobasud. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Drabi Theria bringing you another episode of Tales of Arise. We last left off. We finally destroyed the weird mount place. Or was it? I, I forgot, what was the name of the place again? I kind of forgot. Shit. The Wedge. That's the name of the place. So apparently we just we went, we went there and destroyed the core or the Zugo or whatever was siphoning the uh, actual energy from the Dan and Home world. My God, this music is so freaking loud. But yeah, we managed to like uh, you know free the Dan and Home world from whatever the Reddits were trying to do with like sucking all the astral energy into their home world by Elizabeth. And now it's created this weird hole in the sky, which is. Kinda of ominous, but you know, it's, there's no other way we're gonna we're going to be able to solve this problem without leaving some kind of mark on the world. After that, we went through a strange moment where we saw the the astral energy or of Dana itself, and all of us cried. At least everyone here, I didn't know what the fuck's going on. But I'm having the feeling that like. Uh, this might be relevant later on once we get to the the, the Red and Home World and figure out what's going on at that place. I'm like, I really want to go to the Red and Home World. I want to figure out what what is going on in that place. Are the Red and's really all dead in that world, or maybe maybe it's gonna be something important going on there? Like, I have a feeling that like the Red and's aren't dead on the Red and Home World or on Leticus and such. It could be possible that like the Red and's on the Home World are dealing with a separate issue that is causing them to not pay too close attention to what's going on in Dana, I think. You know, kind of like in Scarlet Nexus at the moment, where like, the moon people, like, had little contact with like, Earth and such. Maybe that's the same plot that's going on here. But we're gonna figure out, like, once we get up there. And the only way to get up there is to get to the space station that Alfin came to Dana on. Which is most likely going to be in, so somewhere in Calaglia. If I'm, if I'm going to bet, it's probably going to be somewhere in these ruins here, where we, like, got Xion's outfit. At least I feel like the fa- the Fagon ruins, by the looks of it. Was there any other spot that stood out to me? I don't know, actually. Actually, mm, no. I don't think there was, like, a spot in the elevator. Maybe it's the elevator. Maybe there was, like, there was, like another floor or something. I- we didn't realize it until later. So yeah, uh, first off, I did like uh, complete this other side quest over here that was in like uh, Mahaksar, the one the the one that ha I had to fight those boomies, which was actually very easy to do. I kind of wish I would, could like play these bosses for you guys, but it's not really that all that eventful. They're just like bigger versions of enemies we've already fought, except for the Deer Zugo in Rinwell's quest that I still need to do. By the way, I don't know if I'm still strong enough to fight it. Oh, and also, I gotta like, um, you know, I gotta like tell you this here since it's relevant for this game. Apparently, this game is getting some extra DLC, and not just like costume DLC, but it's actually getting some actual story edition DLC, which is likely going to take place after the end of this game, which is gonna be interesting. So, in, in other words, it's not gonna be the case where, like, I can play the DLC before the final boss and end the game off. I'm just gonna bet that, like, uh, the DLC might be a slight continuation of the story with a solid ending. Unless, like, they're gonna, like, leave some things unanswered in this, like, main story, and then they'll answer it in the DLC. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm very excited to see how a DLC, you know, story continuation of this game will entail. Also, another thing I'd like to, uh, you know, point out is that, like, I also did some of those, like, uh, arena quests, like, in the background, or, like, you know, off-screen, and I did get some, like, new weapons. Unfortunately, most of them are old. Like, uh, this, uh... Like this, uh, hold on, where is it? Oh, yeah, SR-876A, yeah. <laughs> She's got a rifle with a weird bunny thing on it. A sniper rifle fine-tuned by Shion herself. When assembled, the whole thing can be concealed inside a book bag with little effort. Okay, interesting. And yeah, then a trencher. <laughs> Looks like a water gun. Isn't this kind of like a... I, I do remember, like, when I was editing, that I managed to, like, find this, like, particular, like, Xion swimsuit outfit. I wonder if this will go well with that outfit. 
maybe. And then a rapid match lock. Um, this this was really cool to be honest. Aside from the weird rabbit thing that looks like it's pulling out a hose, but yeah. And then a hunting rifle. And actually, I think I already had that. Oh yeah, I did get some Alfin. It's like a durable bamboo sword. A summer beach parasol. I'm, I'm guessing though this is like a, you know, swimsuit DLC. And then Demon Smite A. A long sword bearing an intricate design on the blade. Not even the demons of hell itself stand a chance against its unrivaled sharpness. Hmm. Yeah, it looks really cool as well. Does it look familiar, or... Hmm, nah, maybe it's just me. Went well, uh, she got... The Birds of Data Handbook, Waterproof Notebook, and Avian Tome. I'm not sure what these things are in particular, but I guess it's just, like, goofy stuff. And for... <laughs> and for Dohalim, he got a pencil. A giant pencil. Yes, I am going to create my own Doodle Bob. I shall call him... Doodle... Doha... Hmm... Doha... Doodle? And maybe you could use a little bit of a workshop with that, Dohalim. Yeah, I got a pencil, and a professional paddle, and a shogun staff. Ooh, looks pretty neat to be honest. Cause so I got a veteran blackboard, I guess it's like a school like thing to this. A bazonga board, and an adamantine shield, which also looks really pretty cool. And the law has the uh, valorous triangles, diving Gauges and Arsenal bracers, which actually looks pretty damn good with Law. I actually like the I like the way these like gauntlets look with the like Wolverine like claws. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to like uh, have this on them to be honest. It looks it looks pretty good, but I'm gonna keep the you know the usual. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Also, I got like a a new you know uh appearance for the characters as well, like uh. I think it was one for... Sorry, it's pretty hard to, like, tell which one's which, because, like, I, I kind of did it off screen. I think it was one for, like, uh, yeah, totally here, too. Which looks pretty snazzy as well. And Ilkalas dancing attire. And then for Kasara, she got, like, this armor here, the red armor. This is, like, the decoy guardsman armor. And I think Law had, like, the red, white wolf vest. I'm not gonna, like, read on them, because, like, it's like, eh. I just don't care. I don't care! Unless it's like funny, like the far road, like, you know, weapons. And yeah, I'm still like on the track to like, uh, try and get like, uh, reduced art casting for Rinwell, as usual. And then after that, uh, I'm just, it's all, it's all gonna be for freaking like, uh, EXP from now on, cause I need to like get to level 80 for like the harder versions of those arena era, on arena fights. But I don't even know how I'm gonna like get to the point in the game where we are at level 80. Like, at what point? Do we have to, like, get to level 80? Uh, but unless, like, unless this game somehow, some way, has so much ground to cover and so much extra story to tell. Which I doubt, because the way Elfin said that we're going to Lenicus sounds so definitive, as if this is going to be where it goes down. That that is the place where this conflict ends once and for all. That, that That's the vibe I'm getting, that, like, Lenicus is going to be the final stage of this story. In which case, I gotta, like, make sure... I don't even know what's gonna happen if I end up getting to the final boss. And then, I suppose I'll just go back to those areas and do all of them? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But we'll have to, like, uh, take it one step at a time. One step at a time. Alright, I got those rid of those boomies. Hey, are all the fly zoos gone now? Sure. That's right. We didn't leave a single one standing. Right. It's true. I guess when you make her mad, she can really take out- take on those Zuko hordes. Hey! Don't give me ideas, Alfin. Yeah! Wow, that's awesome! Thank you so much! I'll never forget what you've done for the rest of our days. Okay, calm down. Hmm... When I think about it, those Zugos were actually pretty cute. I feel a little bad in hindsight. But then I remember how that they, that they knocked me out like several times, so fuck those things! Fuck them! Explosive Gunslinger, Shion. Increased max AG, thank you. A testament to Zugo swarms blasted away by Xion's marksmanship, earning her fear and respect among the people. Okay, increased special ammo. Increased the amount of special ammo Shion can carry to detonate her bombs. Explosion, an advanced fire art that drops a fireball onto the battlefield for a huge explosion. Ooh, laser shot. Increased the amount of damage dealt by one of Xion's bombs when shot with her last special bullet. And increase the ailment rate. Alright, I might as well get this explosion. That sounds pretty damn good. I'm just wondering also, is Shion ever going to get any more healing spells? I feel like at some point she should, but maybe not. I think heal and healing circle is the only 
healing that you get in this game, aside from Dohleen's other healing stuff. Oh yeah, speaking of which, I probably should give him some new stuff as well. Uh, let's see. Probably 10 hit boost gauge increase. Uh, well, hold on. Yeah. Lost, same thing. Actually, I'll just give him this for the little defense might as well. Then alpha and, uh, increases counter attack crit rate increase, yeah. Yep. Okay, okay, uh, what does this get here? Silent treatment. Uh, Alright, something is definitely up with Xion. Yeah, something big by the looks of it. I've never seen her so serious. So, do you think we should say something to Alfin then? I was wondering the same thing myself, but then it occurred to me. Hmm? Whatever this thing on her mind is, it's probably the last thing in the world she wants people to know about. <sighs> if she's trying this hard to keep it secret, then it's not really our place to go telling people before she's ready. Yeah, it seems like she's pre prepared to do something. I'm having a feeling that it has something to do with her thorn curse. Maybe she's going to try and get rid of it herself. Yeah. And maybe like the way to do it without the you know, the core that we needed. Maybe the way to do that is gonna bring her some pain, and I I feel like she would not want Alfin to ever know about that. I can't tell them. There's there's just no way I could, right? I what am I supposed to do? Maybe she's planning on actually betraying us for some reason. Could be possible. Still thinking about that as well, but like the possibility that like Xion might betray us for some reason. That maybe she wanted to be the sovereign all this time or some bullshit. Okay, okay. First off, we need to also go back to Gareth Haros and like uh you know get to this side quest here that just popped up out of nowhere. I actually did see who had the side quest. It was actually a familiar character. It's her. Hey, a long time no see. Oh, hey there, Alfin. Nice to see you. Wow. Still so. Did you come out from Kalaglia to help out with things here? I sure did. I heard about what happened. It sounds like these people had it even worse than we did. If you can't believe it, they might be physically free, but a lot of them still have a long way to go mentally. So it seems. I actually have some knowledge about treating mental health issues, so I'm going to try and help them think independently while I'm here. Thank you. That'd be great, but how do you plan to help them? Simple. By sitting down and talking to them one by one and asking questions, seeing how they respond, and counseling them. That makes sense. I wish we had the time to build it to do that kind of stuff ourselves, but a lot of us are not really good at talking, aside from maybe Katsara. But we don't. Really. Stop feeling like you have to shorter everything yourself, Alfin. You'll... <coughs> burn yourself out! <laughs> you have the blazing sword? Yeah, yeah, I get it. You know what? Maybe you and I could sit down together for a session. What do you say? What? What? You really think I need counseling that badly? <laughs> <laughs> no need to get so defensive. I just want to gauge how you're doing mentally right now. Oh, alright. Well, sure, but... Okay, so what do you need my help with exactly? Okay, sure, let's give it a shot. I don't know Great. what I'm doing, but sure. Sure, let's see how this works. Yeah. Great, alright. I want you to answer a series of questions for me, okay? First question. Don't think too deeply. Just go with your gut. What's your favorite type of astral energy? Uh, hmm, that's interesting. I guess it would be fire, of course. Okay, how do you like to fight? Well, close quarter or nothing. What is the most important thing in your life? <laughs> I'm all about the money. Having my free time. My friends, obviously. Well, having my free time, please. I, I would love to have free time. But this is like Alfin asking and answering these questions. What do you like to do when you have downtime? I like to have fun outside. I prefer to stay home and take it easy. Read all my fanfiction. My Harry Potter fanfiction. Have you ever heard of any mysterious voices before? Uh, can't say I have. That's all the questions for me. Now, as for your results? You're like a thorny lone wolf. Behind your cool, calm, collected disposition is a kind and caring soul. You're not one to be flustered by most anything. But it wouldn't hurt to lean on someone else for support on occasion. Wow. You know, I never really thought of it myself like that, but maybe you're right. Though I'm pretty sure that a lot of these answers were not actually answered by me. <laughs> That's 
what I'm here for. If you ever want another session, come talk to me again anytime. Okay, that was an interesting side quest. What was it for, though? I wish I could get an examination. Well, if you say so. Let me see. Uh, yes, you're in well, all right. Well, if only your brain could keep up with your mouth. Yeah. I wonder what this like thing was even about. To be honest, like, is it for online features or something? That's why I feel. Oh, do you want to have another counseling session together? Uh, not really. Not there now. Sorry, Tilsa. We'll have to save it for later. Being, like, never again, because I don't know what the fuck is the point of all this. No problem. Come back to me once you're ready. Huh, interesting. Alright, then, the rest of one side quest down. I think there's, like, all of them, to be honest. Yeah, I have to go back to these, like, uh, you know, special areas and such at some point in the story. But for the time being, let's head all the way back to Uzelbeck. Ah, oh, Calaglia. It feels like it's been ages. And wasn't Zephyr with us, too? Dad. Hey, chin up! This is your hometown! Yeah. We're, we're actually officially here together as a team now. Aside from all the times I, we went here for other stuff. Okay, so what's this get here? Everyone around here looks so much happier than they used to. I'll say. It feels like an entirely different place. I suppose it's had time to adjust to its newfound freedom. Zephyr would have been so happy to see this. Yeah, he really would have. Especially if he knew Law was... Law? <sighs> Something bothering you, Law? Nah, I... I'll be fine. It's just... you know... <laughs> it still weighs on you, doesn't it? Running away back then. I abandoned my home. Then when I finally come back, it's been liberated. What's important is that it's free. I get that, I do. I just... Uh, I should have been here. Ah, Nah, it's fine. Well, actually, we could have used your help with the false of law. We really could have. Though I doubt you could have, like, changed the outcome of that bullshit fight. Hey there, dude. I remember you. Damn, is that you, Elfin? Way to rock the maskless look! What brings you back to my neck of the woods? Wait, do I really want to hear this? It's not bad news again, is it? What do you mean by, again? I'm talking about Letigus, of course. Ever since that thing showed up in the ocean, it's been a mass panic. People are losing their minds. You know, that's why we're trying to do something about it right now. I figured you wanted the case. Anything I could do to help? We're looking for a starship. You wouldn't happen to have seen one lying around, would you? A starship? You mean the one of those things that had bright eyes? So, sorry, run-ins used to go between Dana and Leticus? Last time I saw one of those was when this last crown contest kicked off, I reckon. This one's kind of special. It came down to the planet way back into the past. Hey, very scampy choosers, you know. But maybe not... Nath... Nath? I guess Nath. Nath, or maybe Nath. But maybe Nath knows the one you're talking about. If I would know, he would. You'll find him at the HQ. Thanks. I think we'll do just that. Alright. Hello, dude. I'm just one thing after another, and it all falls on my head to. Hey, Nath. What? Can't you see I'm. Alfin? Hey there. Looks like you have your hands full. As much as ever. As if I wasn't busy enough putting down the last remnants of Ren and Rule, I'm up to my ears and Dan in disputes. And then, to top it all off, that thing had to come crashing down from out of the sky. Pretty sure we've heard this somewhere before. But enough about my problems. What can I help you with? Yeah, we're looking for an old Renan starship. You wouldn't happen to know any around these parts, would you? A starship? What do you need one of those for? To get to Lenegus. Lenegus? Are you out of your damn mind? Believe it or not, it wouldn't be the craziest thing we've done recently. Well, I believe it. Well, either way, I'm afraid I haven't heard anything about a starship. Then do you have any historical records by chance? Sure, we've got stacks of old records. Mind if we take a look at them? Yeah, okay. Thanks, Nath. Alright. 
I read through all of the records, but I only found a single line that might point to what we're looking for. It mentions a rock that shot across the sky and landed past the mountains. The event was recorded just before the first Renan invasion. And you think that might be the starship? I don't know. There was nothing else in the records that came even close. Oh, so Alfin came back before the first Renan invasion? Okay. It looked like it was someplace called Berg, but maybe I'm reading it wrong. Berg? That ring any bells for you? Yeah, that's one of the biggest volcanoes in Calaglia. I was just there recently, investigating a report of a meteor someone saw. Another meteor in the same area? Really? I wonder if it could have been one of those lights that shot out of the wedge. Oh, so the lights are important to the plot? All the more reason to check it out. Can you tell us how to get there? Okay, they are important to the plot, so we are going to go to those places at some point. The old Zion mine is up that way. One of the veins we abandoned connects to the volcano. Go ahead and use that. But you should be careful. Huh? I don't know if it has anything to do with the meteor. But there's a giant zoogle running riot in there. Never seen anything like it. Oh boy. A zoogle, huh? Well, I turned back as soon as I caught sight of the thing. So I can't tell you much more. Just be real careful if you head out that way. Yeah, don't worry, we're fine. We're beefy, hopefully. Hmm. Nat, are you ready yet or what? Oh, I didn't notice you there, Blazing Sword. And I see... Hmm? Hmm? You're large, you? Zephyrus Kid! Damn, why did you get so tall? Can't believe a little pipsqueak like you was running around with the Blazing Sword himself! I'm sure your old man would be proud. Alright. Go ahead without me, I'll catch up later. You got it, boss. <laughs> see you around, Law. Don't work too hard now. You know that guy? I guess... Can't say I do. Even if I've met the guy before, last time I would have seen him would have been when I was real little. Could have at least said hello back to him. <sighs> I'm the reason my dad's gone, remember? You know how much they looked up to him here. Law. Hmm. Sorry for getting us sidetracked. Let's just head out. Ah. Hmm. Hey, is Law doing okay? Not really. Zephyr's death is still weighing on him pretty hard. Can't say I blame him. Even if it's not his fault, that's a big thing to have to carry at his age. Right. Yeah, but he's trying his best to come to terms with it. I have faith he'll pull through. Good. He's gonna need your support. He's still just a kid, and Zephyr's only one of that. Yeah. I didn't like the sound of that monster Nath was talking about one bit. Well, we have to press on. We're going through Zion Mine to Berg Volcano. Let's move. Ah, damn, a volcano. Alright, then, what is this skit here? God damn, it's about her. It's about the stupid owl. Everything okay with Hoodle, Renwell? He seems kind of out of spirits. It must be the heat getting to him. We don't get these kind of temperatures back in Cislodia. Galaglians born and raised here struggle with it, too, so it's no surprise. Aha! So that's why his plumage is so white. He was born in a winter wonderland! Actually, Dan and Owls absorb the astral energy of whatever land they're raised in. Where they're born doesn't affect their appearance at all. But that's not why he's white. The real reason is that he's still just a baby! Oh really, he is? You mean their plumage changes color depending on where they grow up? Weird. And with all this traveling we've been doing, it wouldn't surprise me if his wings ended up looking like a colorful painting. I think he suits his snowy complexion. It'll feel strange to see him change. How awesome would it be if his head and wings were different colors? And his stomach and sides, like a map of our travels! I'll lay off, will ya? So much for the heat making him docile! You've only yourself to blame for that one. Hoodle takes pride in his appearance, you know. Fascinating. An appreciation of aesthetic beauty in an owlet so young. <laughs> Dohalim, I think you've drawn his attention. What the fuck? <sighs> you know what? I'm gonna go an entire episode not saying a single thing. I'll try. I'll try. I know there are some of you guys who like owls for some stupid reason. So which way is this place? Uh, the mine tunnels. 
Oh, that way. Interesting. I didn't expect it to be through through that area. All the way back to where we began, technically. And of course we have to still fight these dumb things. Okay, still fight this Zoogle. That's a big Zoogle. Yeah, I'm not sure we can take it. Dang, we're still not strong enough. Man, it's been ages since we've been here last. So we're back in the Zion Mine Tunnels. Who would have thought we'd be going through this place again? This is where you and I first fought together. And also the first time we touched, as I recall. Wait, really? Yes, really. Like, in a very platonic way, right, Shion? Nope, you kind of like threw the sword to my boobs. Honestly, it felt really good, Alfin. I wish you could do that again. Okay, so is there anything new in here that I should probably check out? Maybe not. Probably the same little, uh, actually, no. Level 5 Lucky Pebble. Alright, thanks. Yeah, something over this way. A lot of it. This spot here stands out way too much, to be honest, but maybe it's just me. So then it's this way. I guess I was unable to go this way at some point. I just didn't... I didn't bother to check here, to be honest. So this path is supposed to take us out to Berg Volcano? We're not gonna see any lava burst out in front of us or anything, are we? Don't get so paranoid you let a rock fall on your head, Law. I don't know, this is like a fair thing to be afraid of. Lava ain't no joke. Jesus, what's the coloring looks a little bit off. Or, like, dark, too. It's almost as if I, I'm in some kind of, like, a data space or something. Okay, so before I go into this area, I might as well just, like, go, go back outside and, like, eat. Who's a good boy? Wait, why am I petting you? <laughs> All right, obviously we want this. Let's just she actually no. Hold on, we were supposed to like cook something for Dolhalim, right? I think it was one of these grilled raw pigs. Yeah, I we have to cook this first, so give it for Dolhalim. This is a true masterpiece, no less than culinary art. I don't think I've ever cooked with Dolhalim. Like, in forever. Wow. That's some weird-looking meat you're cooking up there. What is it, exactly? That would be grilled rapig. What?! Whoa there! What's the big brouhaha? It's rapig! How could you cook something with such cute little eyes? What did it ever do to you?! I fail to see what the problem is. Rapigs are perfectly edible creatures. <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with you, Grunwell? Come on, meat is good. Having said that, I do realize it's become rather rare to eat them lately. What with people increasingly embracing them as pets and companions. They definitely didn't fall out of fashion to eat because of their flavor, that's for sure. Agreed. Rapigs have tender, fatty meat. The taste can take some getting used to, but I would argue that's part of its charm. If the taste is too strong, I imagine you can either just cook it thoroughly or simmer it with some herbs to mask it. Mm, sounds delicious. Indeed. At first I wasn't sure whether to smoke it with spices or simmer it in water, but I opted to grill it as is instead. Seriously, Dohalim? You have the weirdest tastes. That's probably because when you live the life of a lord, you grow tired of most ordinary cuisine. So you end up seeking out more unusual food. I don't know if that's good or bad. Well, putting aside what it used to be, you've got to admit it does look pretty damn good. Meat is meat, after all. That reminds me. I do believe I once read in a book about rare delicacies, how one can go about preparing an owl. <gasps> is it there is? Oh, teach me, please. I am taking notes right now, Dohalim. Lord Dohalim, Master Dohalim, Senpai, or what's the Sensei? Yeah, Sensei, please. Teach me how to grill these little shits, please. I suppose I won't have the chance to try it anytime soon. No, with Hoodle, you won't! <laughs> no, don't worry. Dohalim doesn't need to get his hands dirty. He doesn't. Alright, let's talk with Law. There's definitely something up with him, so might as well. Mind if I join you, Law? Hey, Law. About what you said before. When? You were telling me how there were things you wished you could have asked your dad. If you want, you can always come to me with your questions. What brought this on all of a sudden? Don't I already lean on you enough as it is? 
Still, there's plenty you would want to ask him if he was still alive, right? I mean, yeah, but... I think you'll have a hard time answering any of them, if I'm being honest. How come? I mean, the stuff I want to ask him about is, like... How he met my mom, and how he won her over. Stuff like that. <sighs> Aww. <laughs> anyway, not really something you can help with, right? You're right. Sorry, Law. I can't even begin to imagine how to help with that. You're telling me. I just wish there was someone experienced I could ask about this kind of stuff. Yeah. He was definitely that. Yeah. Sucks. I understand the feeling, Law. Not being able to get with a girl. I just know. Wait, but I thought Shion had the hots for you. Yeah, well, she's kind of difficult to deal with as well. Alright, rare food connoisseur. Dohanim. Increases rod extension length. Thank you. Increases max HG. Rod extension attack. HG of sort of critical hit and improved healing yards. Ooh! Increases the amount of HP healed from healing yards. Yeah, let's just get that. Long tired of the luxurious meals he ate in his former life. Only the rarest, most unusual cuisines never eaten by men satiate sati sati his hunger. Alright. What about this? Artifact types acquire eights. Sara, I need a boss fish. To, you catch a boss fish and then a silver marlin. Then advanced training grounds completed. I still need to figure out how to get the ice cream though. Where do I get that? Oh well. Let's get a move on. Alright, let's see what this place is all about. Of course, lava. And those fire zoogles, of course. Borg Volcano. Ugh, so hot. Well, yeah. We've reached the inner portion of Berg Volcano. We need to find that starship. And fast. Yeah, and I always wonder why these, like, volcanic areas are conveniently traversable. Oh well, then, then I can do about that. Let's see. Hmm, seems like this, like, uh, area is pretty expansive. Okay, so, that's the way to go, but let's go, so, right. These weird-looking zoogles, of course. Yeah, I've seen these, like, uh, fire zoogles in, like, uh, that, uh, arena. Quite necessary when creating weaponry. I guess we can get a new weapon now. I wonder if we can finally get that freaking blizzard in this like place. I doubt it, but who knows? Am I on a roll or what? Well, look who's in a bright and shiny mood. The Gothic dress, a dress woven using traditional methods native to Dana. Nobody capable of weaving its intricate, beautiful patterns remains in his day and age. Huh, neat. So let me see. Uh, this also something I want to test out as well, but let me like check check this out. I think it's for like uh, yes, yeah, for her. Yep, put that on her. And then there's also something else I want to check out. Uh. This heavy bottle here, is it like a uh, restored if it's already in like a uh, going down the blue? Oh, it keeps it up. Alright. Use that in case of emergencies. I want to keep up the, the, the rhythm and such for as long as possible. Come on. Huh. Well, there's no way we're climbing that. So it seems. Allow me to step in. Wait, you're not thinking of trying to vault over with your rod, are you? Why? I hadn't even thought of that. In any case, stand back. I'll handle this. Okay, it's another map action. Something like Astro Artemis. We can really make weapons with this? Okay, I got a lot, a lot of good stuff from that. Alright, let's see what this like uh, action is, Dolphalim. I'll let you cook. Well, that's, you that's it. Plants grow instantly. <sighs> what if we use this for fruits and vegetables? I'd rather not be our party's fertilizer. Hold on, hold on. Sir, thank you very much. Heh. <laughs> then some more roly polies. My face is starting to sting, and my throat feels super parched. Here, have some water. Just make sure you don't drink too much. 
Thanks. You want some Tushia? We use a lot of these half bottles. Oh, wait. You're hungry more than anything, aren't you? I'm fine, thank you very much. Hmm. Wonder what's up with her chest. 17,000 doll, thank you. Jeez, these things really go away fast. Okay, we're next. Probably another place over here, so no point in, like uh, keeping this up. This is like some kind of like shortcut. Okay, so something over this way. Oh my god, it's a lot of enemies. What the f <laughs> Oh my god, that fireball attack did so I much damage. Okay, please okay, thank you. A brigandine. A brigandine? Brigandine? Brigandine. Light armor lined with countless pieces of metal that made it highly flexible and adjustable to each wearer's unique physique. Hey, new equipment! Alright, this is the Kasaras. Okay, it's like weaker than this one. Huh. That's a surprise. I found armor in a new area that's weaker than the one I have now. Okay, so something on the other side of this place. Doesn't seem to be that complicated of an area. Yeah, that the attack that Xion does does so much damage. Okay, what's on the other side of this place? This bridge will hold itself together, right? Most definitely. Though I won't make any promises. Which one is it? Oh, it will 100% work, uh, Law. Totally. Yeah. Mystic Cloak. A cloak containing water astral energy. It emits an invisible fog, softening the flow of any attacks that come to the wearer's way. I found some equipment. Alright, I guess that's for Rinwell too. Yeah, it's actually stronger than this one. And he's a lot of happy balls this episode. I want to keep up the uh, EXP. I really do. This looks like the way to go. Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, let's go this way. I still feel like that should like just break through shields, to be honest. One more uh, happy bottle. Golden gel. Thank you. Callous. Calcified. Calaglia. What kind of poem is that? A sparse one. Oh, okay. Him and his poetry. Over this way. It's crazy to see rocks melt before our eyes. Watch where you're going, everyone. If you fall, there will be nothing left of you. Exactly. So don't try anything funny. Especially you, Law. No pushing anyone. Not even as a joke. I'm not a little kid! <laughs> ah, Law, sometimes you do act like a little kid, Law. I'm ready, Jill! This ends! Oh, you almost, I almost died there. Huh, I guess I like uh, passed by two areas over here. Something, something over, over up there, or wherever that is. I didn't know you had that sort of trick up your sleeve, Dohalim. I would have figured rocks and plants would be too different for you to handle both. Not necessarily. Both of them contain Earth astral energy. Luckily for me. This area is rich not only in fire energy, but earth as well. Ah, nice. Glad to have you on board. Absolute. Absolute protection for absolute peace of mind. That was the design ethos for this defensive gear. Layer with chainmail, light armor, and plating. Okay, nothing this way. Just an easy path to wherever this place is. But yeah, also, just in case it's like something up ahead, might as well just like check my skill panels. Nothing new yet, but except for Iver, Iron Cleaver. A two-hit slicer counterattack activated when hit while bracing for an enemy attack. Eh, I do kind of want to like get like uh, other stuff here, like easier perfect evasion maybe. Yeah, I feel like I kind of... Oh, well, this is for the attack, so might as well. I think that's most of everything I can get for her. I just need to like get her skill panels ready. 
Probably just some faster HE recovery or something. But right now, uh, increase, uh, special ammo. Then for Rimwell, let's finally get this, like, uh, Arc Cast reduced. Then for Ophelim, uh, let's see. Improved healing arts, please. And then for Kassara, uh, let's give her her Grease Boost Gauge. Yeah, not much for Law yet. So let's, like, give her some inspiration, I guess. I guess. And then this here, Absolute. Alright. Let's pass this way. Oh, it's gonna be a boss up ahead, isn't there? I knew it. I I I, I knew it. All right then. Uh, let's head on the way back, shall we? I doubt there's any like new accessories yet. Yeah, still no. Yeah, somehow this one was weaker than the one Kassara already has. Just crazy. Where did I even get the elemental guard? Yeah, where did I get it? it seems so much more like defensive than compared to a anything else that the other characters have. And it's higher quality too. The price is like wow, six thousand. Yeah, get her, her supreme ignis roar. Probably not perfect for an environment like this, but whatever. And then I'll give her taming water third edition. And finally, at long last, Dolim is going to get a new staff. Oh my gosh, I actually did get some before the Tenebrous staff. That stupid lizard fin I need to find. Oh well, here's your new weapon at long last. Okay, let's like force these things at least. Get this, and this. We use a lot of happy bottles, but we have good life bottles, we have a lot of good stuff, great flavor, gel. Yeah, we could use some of these, three at least. And extra orange gel. The rest, uh, let's get peach gels. Alright, let's rest up. More food. Let's talk with other characters too, as well. I think only Rimwell needs to, you know, make the ice cream, but I don't know where to, you know, get that. Ah, okay, I have to wait some more time then. Days like this are perfect to curl up with a good book. Yeah, tell me about it. What in the world would you do with a book? Hey, the pictures can teach a guy a lot. <laughs> oh my god, Law. I will say, one thing I am noticing is that, like, Rimwell's hood is so ridiculously big. It really is. Like, it's very, like, obvious when you run with her. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. It's gonna, like, take out away half of my, you know, time with this food buff. W running all the way to this boss. Alright. Oh, boy. Wait a minute. Is that? No way. What the hell is that thing? Probably that monster Nath warned us about, if I had to guess. That's a fucking Zuko? This might have been where one of those lights that shot out of the wedge landed. But why this location? If the purpose of the wedge is to harvest Dana's astral energy. We can figure that out later. If that thing gets into town, it's going to cause chaos. We need to take it down and move on. Let's go! Oh boy! Okay! <laughs> yeah, that is the same. This one's tough, but we have no choice. Oh okay, no. Need healing. Shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Here it comes. Focus. On your toes, everyone. Okay, uh, how do I target it? What do I hit? Suddenly turning tail doesn't seem so ridiculous. Why? Are you scared? Me? <laughs> Are you? Do you even have to ask? Of course I'm scared. Focus up before we become that thing's lunch. Oh Is gosh. Zoogles? Take care of them while keeping an eye on it. This one keeps now, charging us. Arc. That's what my shield's for. Get the hunt. Good. Good. I'll leave it to you. Ah, oh, great. It's gonna be one of those annoying things, isn't it? Guess how much after that giant beam of his? Ow. Jesus Christ. Oh uh, yeah, I remember how annoying this motherfucker was in Balsam's fight. Near unbearable. I will say the camera's a little bit wonky here. It really is. 
All right. Here's a healing art. First aid. This debt shall not be forgotten. What are we supposed to do about this guy? Oh shit. To keep fighting. The enemy wields art. Illuminate the dark. Magic is out. Hold on. Not on my watch. Ow 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 ow. Life first four. Radiant citizen. I got stunned like crazy. Try harder. You're mine. He's freaking Christ. All right. Fucking Christ, this annoying motherfucker. Now I know completely why you are so annoying in Balsa's fight. I can't heal you forever. Now I can let What now? Reinforcements incoming. Not a problem. Oh boy. We really gotta do something about this lock on, I swear. Okay, go watch out for this guy. Alright, let's go do something. Fucking, I hate that stupid attack it does. All right. It's about the strike. Oh boy. Look sharp, everyone. Shit, 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 shit. Uh, everyone's fucking dead. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Uh. There. Everyone, all right? We won't surrender. We won't retreat. Not yet. Whatever you do, just please stay. Okay. Life bottle. Safe. I cannot believe Here's that fucking happened. Arc. How are we supposed to take on something so big? I'll handle it. Just watch and learn. Gotcha. That's enough. Deja vu. Uh, go back down. Whew! That was different. Everyone okay? Yeah, I think so. That thing scared the pants off me. It felt like it had a different aura than other Zoogles, didn't it? Yeah. It wasn't like the one that Almadria sicked on us either. Its elemental astral energy variance was out of this world. It was like fighting a lord. I guess it's safe to assume that if it came out of the wedge, it must have played some part in helping harvest astral energy. But what? Brandon, the list is like more of these those guys and these, those other areas that I haven't fully explored yet. Perhaps a living spirit vessel? It's plausible, given the location. Or it may be part of a new force dispatched to regain control of Dana. Really? If we assume that monster was one of the four beams of light, we must have prevented something from taking place here. I'd like to think so, knowing how much grief it gave us. But at least with that out of the way, we can keep moving forward now. Let's go. All right. Hmm. I'm surprised that like neither Alpha nor Xion recognized that thing, though. Increases max AG. Okay. Unrelenting blaze. The flames of rebellion consumed all of data, sparing not even the flaming giant itself. Incineration. Oh, there it is. Incineration wave. A swing from the blazing sword that summons a large pillar of fire inflicts self damage when used. Ah, okay. So that's where it was. All right, then let's keep a move on. A secret key. The key to a certain door in Calaglia. Simply beholding it makes one wonder what lies beyond the threshold. Oh, there it is. Finally. Need to be stronger. That, that that has to lead to Boss's castle. The part that part of that Boss's castle that I couldn't get to. I'll be sure to like check that out later. Where are we going now? Outer area. Hey, is that it over there? Ooh, sweet. 
<laughs> oh, the, the merchant went all the way here, too. How'd you get past that giant Zoogle? If you're having trouble getting back to town, I can lend you a hand. <laughs> oh my god, you- This guy is a true Chad. He managed to get through that giant demon without getting a scratch. What is your wisdom, great man? Alrighty, I don't- I doubt we're going to go into another boss, so... Let's just keep a move on. I'm like, whew. That, that guy like, pooped me out. Okie dokie. So that's the ship. Alfin? Did you remember something? No, but I have seen this starship before. Okay, how are we gonna make it work? This is it. This is the ship I traveled in when I escaped from Lenigus. Three centuries later, and it's no worse for wear. I'll take a look at the internals. Damn! I'm amazed it still works at all after all this time. The past meets the present. I really am from a different time and place. Yeah. But you've got us now, Alfin. Not only that, but you've helped out so many people, too. Law's right. Rinwell, too. You're one of us now. No more carrying the weight of history on your shoulders. You're a part of this world. Right. Thanks, you guys. It should fly. All internal systems seem to be operating. However, considering how long it's remained inactive, I suspect it will take some time before it's ready for takeoff. How much time are we talking here? Starship mechanics are not what I'd call my forte, so I'd rather not hazard a guess. So we've just got to sit around here and wait? I'm terrible at waiting. That's because you're a child. Oh, but how about we use this time to prepare and gather supplies for the trip? Oh, is this... Hmm... Is this going to be the point of no return in this game? This can't be right. Who knows? Good idea. Who knows when we'll be back from Lenigus once we leave. We should prepare ourselves for every possible scenario before we go. Let's try not to stay away too long. I'd hate for anything to happen to the place while we're gone. Either we race ahead, or we take due precaution to ensure we have no regrets. I shall leave it up to you as to how we proceed, Alfin. Yeah, this is this is the point of no return. Definitely. Works for me. Wait until the ship is ready to take off. Alright then, uh I guess we'll just have to rest here for a bit. Look at this, there's a campfire <laughs> set up right over there. It's funny, isn't it? What is? All this. When we first started this thing, did you ever imagine we'd be going to Lenigus? After all, this is the sort of thing I was rebelling against when I ran away from home, right? I'm sure Zephyr would be proud if he knew what his son was doing right now. A little shocked too. Yeah, no. We're defying the order of things that have persisted for three hundred years. <laughs> Deep down, I knew our journey would lead to confronting Lenigus. Yeah, you maybe, but you're a Renan. The rest of us can barely even picture what it means to leave Dana. No offense to Shion and Dohalim, but it's worth remembering we're heading into enemy territory. No offense taken, and this is no picnic for me either. Remember. Our aim is to ensure that both Lenigus and the Renan homeworld leave Dana alone for good. I don't think we'll be able to avoid a fight, 
So what, we're just gonna go into the capital of the entire world then? I feel like most of us aren't pointing out the fact that, like, uh, guys, running home was a planet, not a city. Uh, we'll probably find the, the particular city that we need to go to, and whatever we're gonna do. We don't even know who's leading the Renans now. Is there no way we can talk them into leaving us alone? Do we even know what's going on in that planet of theirs? We don't- I feel like we don't know. The people of Lenigus? Sure. I mean, we found a way to make it work with Xion and Dohalim, right? And it's not just us. If places like Menensia can do it, then why can't because we- Because there are still many of my kind who believe it was right and natural that Rena reigns over Dana. There are those on Lenigus who have never stepped foot on Dana. I doubt whether they'd even listen to Danans. Look, none of us want to fight. But these are the same people who fired that wedge down on Dana. What happens next is on them. Right. We're not going to sit back and wait for them to oppress us again. Right. Don't forget, there's also a good chance the Red Woman is somewhere on Lenigus. And wherever she is, we should find the Renesalma, too. That's right. If we can take it back, then Xion can finally get rid of her thorns. <sighs> Xion? Huh? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there's something going on with her. Wait a minute, do you guys... Is this how you guys sleep? While sitting on boxes? That cannot be comfortable. Where? Oh boy. The fuck she go? Your party disbanded. Where'd Shion go? How could she just go off on her own? Oh, she's at the ship, of course. Huh. There's a... Uh... The place Ganeth Haros, right? All the way over there. Can I like see the other world from there or not? I'm guessing not. Just Ganeth Haros. I will say, I do like the fact that I can see Ganeth Haros from here. A neat detail. Ah, oh, true to cutscene. Shion. Shion. What the? It's your thorns? But why? Uh oh. You okay? Just now, it looked like you used your maiden powers to suppress your thorns. You can really do that? Stay out of my way. The fuck is going on now? Okay, Shion, if this is about us not eating food, come on, it was just like five minutes ago. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, I can cook you some more if that's what you want. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, this is gonna go well. What is she doing? Wait a second, are you planning to go alone? Shut up! Why would you do this? I told you to shut up! I won't let you. I mean it. I refuse to let you. I won't tell you again. Move or I'll shoot. If that's the case... Then go ahead and shoot me!
All right, Xion, what is going on with you? Do you remember back when I was stabbed by Volron? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I thought for sure that he had killed you back there. Her is her core is going. Hey, wait, is it the case? Her core is going haywire. That wasn't the first time. Oh. Huh? The first time was when I was only a child. After that, no matter how often, I just couldn't die. Couldn't die? So you're immortal? How's that even... <clears throat> I believe you, Xi'an. Tell me how... How is something like that possible? My thorns. They're me, but at the same time, not. They're part of me. I have no idea why. But my thorns will never let me die. At least not before I'm meant to. Oh. You can't die before your death? When my thorns free themselves, it will be my death. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've seen it. A darkness that swallows up everything until nothing remains. It's a vision of oblivion I can't escape. But she wanted to get rid of the thorn curse. Right? Oh. Oh. This story just got dark. I want to believe it's all just a bad dream. But no matter what I tell myself, I... I know it's not. Wait, the whole reason you, you needed the Renes Alma was to get rid of your thorns, right? If I burn away what's inside, then what will happen to the rest of me? <laughs> right. Either way you look at it, I'm going to die. But if I am going to die, I figure I can at least take my thorns out with me. That's... What I've been after this whole time. That's why you turned your back on your fellow Renets and chose to fight with us, isn't it? And while we've all been fighting to keep on living, you have been with us fighting desperately to die. That was the plan. But then I met all of you, and I... Before I knew it, I didn't want to die anymore. Shia, don't lose hope yet. We'll find a way to save you. There's still time to... It's pointless. Why? Because the darkness won't just consume me. The truth is, it will consume all of existence as well. Why? It was only a suspicion at first. But ever since the Red Woman triggered my maiden powers, I've been more certain than ever before. It was then that I finally came to realize my powers were holding my thorns in check the entire time. But they don't anymore. Not since Lenigus. When the wedge fell. Every day, I feel the thorn's power growing stronger inside of me. Pretty soon, I won't be able to hold them back anymore. And when that happens... They will consume all existence. And that's why you wanted to leave by yourself. You planned to find the Renes Alma on your own and sacrifice yourself to stop the thorns. But that's... too much. It's way too much. When this all began, I didn't care what happened to me or anyone else. And what happened to the Renans or the Danans didn't matter to me at all. I know I have to die. 
But I don't want to. Not now that I have this. Aww. I wish we had never met. Then I wouldn't have to feel this way. See you later. It's no better than being a slave. How can you endure this? Elfin. It's not fair. I don't care what anybody says. I won't let it happen. You can fight this. We'll fight until the end together. Isn't that what you said to me before? Even if it should mean that it'll be the end of everything else, too? Xion, what do you want? It's your decision, ultimately. But if you decide not to fight fate, I will. Even if I have to do it alone. No. You won't be alone. I'll fight as well. Count me in as well. I want to be a force for good, not hate. And me too. I meant it with all of my heart when I told you before. Neither of you are alone in this at all. You guys. And I, for one, don't believe this venture is without hope. Huh? Xion is the descendant of a maiden from 300 years ago. Given the circumstances, it seems very likely that those events have some connection to her thorns. The true nature of which, I imagine we will discover as we make our way to Lenegas and uncover the truth of what's unfolding here. I take it you mean we might find a way to get rid of her thorns and she live? I'm sorry guys, I'm so dead quiet. I love this scene so much. It's certainly possible. Though I suspect the nature of the Sovereign is connected somehow. So be it. I've already lost everything I had once. And I won't let it happen again. God, Alfred is so fucking awesome. Xion. No matter what happens from now on, we're right here with you. All of us are. You are not alone. Fucking copyright, I swear. You're gonna ruin this scene. You guys. You're all so stubborn. right now in a little while longer i just want to hold on to this dream and most of all more than anything else i want to be with all of you so let's go on to lenicus That was the best scene in this entire game. Oh my god. Well, guys, this game's awesome. This game is just. This game's. This, okay, let me just sit down and just explain what I love about this game. The characters, the characters, it's so incredible to me how this game handled these main characters so well. Like, 
I think I love everyone in this cast. The main characters. Alfin, Shion, Rinwell, Dolim, La, Kassara. I love all six of them. There's not one character in this team I dislike. In the, in, not even in the slightest. I like all of them. And some of them I, I love a little bit more than the other, but... <laughs> there is not a character in this team I dislike. And that's... It's because of the way they wrote their stories that just weave so well together with the, the core theme of this game. It's just Elfin in particular that I like the most out of this cast, the main character, because of just how strong his convictions are and how he just, he just will not back down. Even when he has every right to, he just won't back down. I fucking love that about his character. From the very beginning, I love that about him. Fuck, I love this game. I love this game so much. I am so invested in these characters. And I'm just so glad, so glad that there's going to be a DLC that continues this story beyond what we're going to do. It's probably This is probably going to be the final boss of the game that we're approaching. I think, anyways. I, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to go, but however this ends, that will go down as the best scene in this entire game, by far. All right, let's talk with our big... <sighs> oh, God, this is freaking... <sighs> I love these guys so much. Hey, Dolame. The end of the world. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, no, as we know it. I believe Shion is telling the truth. What about you? As a friend, yes, I want to believe her. Everything that's happened seems to point towards some sort of great danger that's lurking ahead of us. Still, it's hard to fathom something that could usher outright doom to the world. That those really are the stakes we face. No, I understand. Even Shion doesn't seem to know exactly what will happen to bring it all about. We have so many pieces of the puzzle in our hands. So many clues. Yet the complete picture eludes us. So where do her thorns fit in then? Well, I imagine they must sit at the very center of it all. You remember the voice we all heard while we were inside the Wedge, don't you? Yeah, I remember. It was the will of Dana's astral energy come to life. Well, that's what we all thought. Right. And from that, we're able to hypothesize how vast concentrations of astral energy can become sentient. Yeah, I'm still but wondering about that. Return to when we found Shion in Pelegion. Yeah, and that, like, de demon we saw, too. That could also be an example of the Astral Energy becoming sentient. When her thorns went wild, they contained far more astral energy than any mere Renin would normally have inside them. So you think those thorns might be alive, too? That their will is what keeps her from dying? But why would they want to destroy the entire world? As for that, I really cannot say for certain. Its goals still remain a mystery. It may be a mere fluke that her maiden powers have been able to contain it thus far. You know, I've noticed since we've met that you like figuring out riddles. Can you blame me? When one realizes that the world they once thought to be true is but a mere facade, they can't help but seek the truth. Especially when that deception has led to others getting hurt. Dohalim? I imagine the remaining pieces of the puzzle that we seek rest somewhere within Lenigus. As for what the final picture will look like, who can say? I think it's best we not dwell on it too much for the time being. Yeah, there's still a lot of questions I still have for the story. I'm just wondering, is it really going to be the case that we're going to go into this final level and there's going to be a final boss? I... I don't know. Right. There's still stuff in this world in Dana I have to do as well. So I, d I doubt I'm still done with this game. <laughs> Unless the game is somehow expecting me to get all the way to level 80 from level 42. I doubt it, but who knows. I wonder what awaits us on the other side once all the pieces have been assembled. Yeah, me too. Me too. Hey, Kisara. How are you holding up? Who, me? Yes, you. You took a hit from those thorns again, didn't you? Oh, that? That was nothing. Compared to what Xion's going through, you mean? Still, even if you yourself might be willing to endure that kind of pain, 
That doesn't mean Xion wants to have to see you get hurt by her thorns, you know. <sighs> yeah, I know. I'll be careful. Xion doesn't know how lucky she is to have you around, you know? Dashing in to save her at the last minute. Yeah, yeah, very funny. I'm being serious. You went up and held her close like you still had that mask on, and you didn't even bat an eye. She really needed that. That's what I mean when I said you saved her. Just like you did with the rest of us. I just want for Xion what we all have. The ability to touch someone without the fear of killing them. Those thorns have robbed her of the kind of everyday things we all take for granted. And it's not right. You can say that again. It may be normal for us, but that doesn't make it any less special or important for her. I hope she gets what she wants. I have my own dreams. But a world without her, where she dies so we can all survive, isn't a world I want to live in. Agreed. It's like more and more keeps getting taken from her, and I'm done with it. Same, Halfin, same. God, I fucking love this man so much. Let's take back what's been stolen from us. Hell yeah. Hey there, Law. Did you know? You mean about Xion? Yeah, I didn't have the slightest idea. I mean, every once in a while I thought something seemed a little off, but I never could have imagined. It's like a completely different world was spinning around me and I couldn't even see it. You and me both. I mean, I knew something was bothering her, but I could never quite figure out what it was. You? But you're the one always looking out for her, aren't you? That's what I thought. But in reality, I didn't understand it all. What I thought was helping and being there for her was actually just driving her into a corner. At least you figured it out in time, though, right? I don't think we're out of the woods yet. But yeah, you're right. We brought her back from the edge, and we're going to stop those thorns from taking her. No matter what. Yeah, with all of us together, there's nothing we can't handle. She on the world, we can save everyone. And I mean it when I say we, Alfin. I know. No lone wolfing it. Hey, you're the expert on what my dad would say. Do you think he'd pat me on the back or tell me off? Zephyr, I don't think that he'd have that much to say, to be honest. You're your own man now, Law. And you've already made up your own mind about what you want. I guess he couldn't say anything even if he wanted to. Law. Sorry. I guess those of us amongst the living have enough problems to deal with, don't we? We'll need all our strength to save Xion. I'll probably end up worrying again at some point. But I guess I'll think it over more then. That okay? Yeah, I think it is. Ah. Stay focused, Alfin. We've got stuff to do. It's not gonna do anyone good if we let ourselves get overwhelmed by what's going on. Yeah. I agree, my bro. Hey there, Runwell. Can't sleep? After everything we just heard? How could I? Fair enough. Xion's had to deal with so much on her own. Even when we were all laughing and celebrating, she just kept quiet and didn't say anything. I thought she was keeping her distance because of her thorns. That it was because she didn't want to hurt anybody by getting too close. I just figured that that was the type of person she was, you know? Yeah, I, yeah, I kind of figured that as well. I was like, they thought it was all just because of the fact that she didn't want people to get hurt. Or, at the very least, it represented, like, how she felt towards other people. Until Alpha came along, without his, like, pain and such. But now, like, knowing that the, about the fact that she wanted to die all this time puts a lot of things into perspective. But... It turned out to be none of that. All this time, she felt like she had to die and sacrifice herself for the greater good. But even then, she didn't think she could say anything to us about it. I know. She was so alone this entire time. How could I call her a friend and yet be so completely blind to everything she was going through? I'm sure it made her happy, knowing you were there for her. You... Really think so? Yeah, I do. If she didn't think of us as friends, 
I don't think she could have ever opened up to us like that. You were a good friend to her before, and you'll be an even better one now. Yeah, I really hope so. I want to be the best I can for her. When you think about it, we were all alone in our own way. But over time, we've all found ways to let each other into our lives. I hope Xion's able to do that one day too. No, I mean, I hope she's able to do that more. Lots and lots more. I think it'd be really nice if we could all just be there to support each other when it really counts. And forget about our grudges and pain. Finwell. Well, that's gonna require you uh, not saying that line around her from now on. Oh, well, ugh. it's gonna be a hard compromise, but I'll try, Alfin. I'll try. If only Xion could have flown with the wind to... Bad time, Rimwell. Bad time. It'd be nice if everyone came together and supported each other. Yeah. Hey there, Xion. Jesus Christ, what a... Hey, you doing all right? <laughs> I seem to cause nothing but worry. As much as I try to look like I have things under control, everyone still worries about me. Eh, this comes with the territory, uh, Shion. You're our healer, our best one. Of course we're gonna worry. You're not the only one. Hey, do you remember the first time you said I was your friend? <sighs> no. When was that? Sorry, I can't remember. Yeah, me neither. That's okay. It came so naturally to you, I'm not surprised you forgot. I was different back then. The Danans were not even people to me, and I knew I would always be alone. But in that room with Deadime, when you called me your friend, it just shattered the wall that I'd built up around me. Oh yeah, that. That time that I decked him in the face after he said some shit to you. Yeah, I will always remember that day, Sion. Sorry about that. Because until that moment, I'd only seen you as a means to an end. I thought of you as a way to use the Blazing Sword and to obtain the Renis Alma. <laughs> but after that day, one time became two. And before I knew it, you'd made a habit of calling me and Dohalim your friends. It didn't matter that we were Renans. You cared about us as you would any other people. Then... Everyone else started to call me their friend, too. To think of me as their friend. Before then, I never even dreamed I could have that. I didn't want to die and lose you all. But I also didn't want to live if it meant you would all die in my place. Xion. But then, I realized... I'd only really been thinking of myself that entire time. After saying how I felt, and hearing what you all had to say, I finally understood that. <sighs> Don't worry, it's okay. I'm not planning on dying anymore. I've met too many people along the way who I truly care about to give in now. So I'll fight. For Dana and for myself. I'll fight against my fate to preserve our future. And I'll win, come hell or high water. Damn. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I won't let the world end because of me. They still haven't explained that part yet. How are the thorns... Like, I know that that's the mystery, right? But I'm just wondering, who still, who gave her the thorn curse? Still haven't explained that part. It's going to be a long, hard road ahead, Xion. Our fight won't be over until everyone, both Danans and Renans, can finally live in peace. But I swear I'll be there with you until the very end. Thank you. Ah. 
Remember what we learned back in Calaglia? There's no wall so high that we can't break it down. Yeah. I think you may be right about that. Oh, this dude is so cute. This is so fucking cute. Like, I, I, I understand why why the developers, like, everyone and their mother ship these two together. They're so fucking cute. They're so, they're so wholesome. It's like, god damn, I just love their story. Everyone well rested? Then let's go. We depart for Lenegas. Okay, let me, like, take one good look at this place before I go. Like, I kind of want to just, like, see what Lenegas is all about. I don't have the feeling that it is the point of no return, but I, I don't know. Alright, let's go. Well, it's the moment of truth. This lady better hold together once we're up in the air. La, don't say that! You're going to jinx us! Speaking of which, Alfin, this bucket of bolts got a name? A name? Hmm. You know, I'm not sure she ever had one. I never really thought about it. Well, after all the trouble we went through to find her, we should give her one, right? I was thinking something like... Ball Knights. Huh? It means owl in the ancient tongue. No, 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 Rinmo. No, 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 no. Do not, do not, do, do, do not. I swear to fucking God, Rinmo. We had a tender moment together as a, as a group. Don't you fucking dare become my least favorite character by fucking mentioning those stupid owls and this stupid language and this stupid lord. <laughs> you know, guys, there is one thing I hate about this game. Literally, the one drawn to the skies. I like it. Sounds perfect for our little escapade. I feel like I'm the only oddball in this entire fucking game who thinks that these owls are so stupid. Not sure I'm completely convinced, but, well, it's as good a name as any. From now on, she'll be known as the Fall Knights. Alright, sure. Okay, people. We have two goals. First, we need to get to Lenegas and make the Renans finally leave Dana alone. And then, we need to figure out the truth behind Shion's thorns and find a way to save her. Sound good? Yeah, I'm excited to get to Lenegas, so finally. Right, and let's go. I doubt this is the point of no return. I doubt it. Oh wow, this is a really like, good looking ship. 300 years and it's still operational. Jesus Christ. Renin technology is something else. You know, I can still hardly believe it. Yeah, I'm having an existential crisis. This is what space feels like? Ah, oh, God. Believe what? I mean, just look at it. The whole of existence crammed inside a tiny frame. Now that you mention it, I guess you're right. It does look more like a painting than a living, breathing world. From up here, all the struggles we've been through feel so insignificant. Nothing like realizing how small you are to put everything into perspective. Kind of makes the differences between the Renans and the Danans feel pretty small too, huh? How much longer until we reach Lenigus? There are better ways to use your time than napping. We should take a moment to familiarize ourselves with the facilities on board before arrival. Good idea. The Starship may end up serving as our base of operations once we're down there. Oh, really? Think you'll be alright with the controls? You mean the one set to automatic pilot? I dare say I'll manage. I'm basically just here to supervise. In that case, she's all yours. Alright, party disbanded. Everything okay, Shion? You seem a little different. Different? Like in a bad way different? No, not at all. You seem more driven lately, like you found a zest for life. 
It suits you. Yeah, I'm, I feel a little bit happier than my usual other character who shares my same exact voice. I kind of don't know her name, but apparently our game is like a collabing with hers. Uh, I have no clue what you're talking about, Xion. Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You'll understand later. Just don't ask me to go to Masubis. Uh, what the heck's a Masubis? Alright then, uh, Dohalim, let me talk with you. I hope they'll accidentally talk with Xion. You do. Hmm. Is something wrong? No. I was merely thinking how it had been seven years, that's all. You mean since you became a lord and left Lenigus? I guess even someone like you can get homesick, huh? I am as prone to sentimentality as any other. Tell me though, you too have a history with Lenigus. A traumatic one, no less. This trip will probably mean facing up to some difficult emotions. Doesn't that frighten you? Well... It is a place where I took the lives of countless people. I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about it. But I can't keep running forever. The past is what it is. There's no changing that. But the future's what we make it. I see. Dohalim? Forgive me. I was wrong to pry. We have more pressing matters to address. Come back and speak to me when you finish looking around the ship. All right. It is as you say, the past is what it is, and there's no change yet. That goes for me just as much as it does you. Alrighty. Uh, let's see what this place is all about. Yes, these like the front controls and all that. And there's one, I guess. Oh wow, it looks so pretty from here. Unless that's data, but oh no no, I think this is like, that's like, I guess. We have a dining table here. Oh my god, this place is really snazzy. Huh. What's this place? No, none. Some weird things back here. And some kind of like, uh... Oh yeah, some capsules. I guess like these were the ones that Alfin was in. Hey there, Kasara. You okay? Feeling airsick? Actually, now that you mention it, not at all. These starships are a remarkably smooth ride, all things considered. Nothing like being at sea, thank goodness. I just realized something like, Kazar is like, a uh, very obsessed with fishing, but doesn't like going on boats. That's kind of funny. Glad to hear it. That device there caught your eye, huh? I was just wondering what it is. It looks big enough to fit a person inside of it. It's a healing pot. It fixes injuries and illnesses. Oh, you don't say. Well, that should definitely come in handy if any of us get injured while we're down there. <sighs> Alfin? Was it something I said? No, I... Uh, I was just thinking back to when I escaped Lenigus, that's all. What with the ceremony and losing control, I was a total mess. Naori laid me inside here. So, you're saying you got in this thing straight after escaping? But that mean... You were inside for 300 years? Wow, okay. Yes, it sounds crazy, I know. But... Don't even ask me why I stayed asleep all that time. Actually, I'll just answer for you now. It was it was surprisingly comfortable in there, and I and I haven't had a sleep in like you know ages since I went to that planet. Trust me, they they don't have a good bunking. That's definitely quite some lion, all right. But still, whether you meant to or not, I sure am glad that it's this century that you finally woke up in. Yeah, imagine if you like uh, woke up like. Yo, a few years later, that would have been- we would have been so screwed. What do you mean? With the amount of fighting we've done, we would have never made it this far without you. And not only that, but... Alfin, can you recall back to what it is that I said to you? Back when we left Menencia? About the dream of coexistence, and needing to learn what it entailed? Of course. That's why you came with us, right? To learn what you couldn't at home. Even in that time, I was well aware that what I was living was a lie. But at the same time, I also felt really compelled to fulfill my brother's wishes. I'll always remember him fondly. But the coexistence we're fighting for isn't for him. It's for people now, and those still to come. The world's bigger than just men and Sia. My dream is for all Danans. Wherever they might be, to be free. If I've learned anything on this journey, it's that. 
And the one who brought me along was you, Alfin. I'll forever be grateful to you. Well, we're not out of this forest just yet. You should probably save your thanks. At least, until we've dealt with the Red Woman. I know. But whatever we find when we get down there, I'm through looking the other way. Kisara... Probably getting a little ahead of myself, huh? Let's take things one step at a time. Damn, these moments are so, so good. I'm just so dead silent. This entire episode has been me just being dead silent. It's been a long and winding road getting here, but in the end, I'm glad we all met. Yeah, me too. God, yes, it's so awesome. Hey there, everyone. Well, hey there, Locke. Guess both of you are talking to each other. Hey, Alvin, listen to this. So, Law and I were just talking, and... Hey, shut up! What's got Law all flustered? Only that he's afraid of flying, the big baby. And after all that fuss he made about naming the ship, too. Hey, I never said I was scared. I just think it's, you know, a little unsettling how we're going to be cruising through space in a glorified tin can. That's all. It's a starship, dummy. That's what it's supposed to do. I don't think there's anything strange about it. Well, maybe you're the one with the problem then. <laughs> guys, guys. I'm no expert, but I think we can trust Ren and technology. It got me to Dana in one piece, remember? Oh, that's a good point. If you think so, Alfin, it must be okay. Don't you agree, Law? Hard to argue with that, seeing how you hitched a ride in one of these things before, Alfin. It's just wrong, okay? Ah, uh, that's so funny. Are you still worried? No, why would you think that? <laughs> oh, God, you two are so comedic. All right, Xion. We'll be going to Lenegas soon. This must feel like a homecoming of sorts to you, huh? What was life on Lenegas like back then? You know, before you came to Dana. Let's just say I don't have many happy memories. I've had thorns my whole life, for as long as I can remember. They called it treatment, but in truth, they were just using me as a guinea pig for their research. You mean they experimented on you? That's right. All I was to them was a riddle to solve. They poked and prodded me, trying to figure out what triggered my thorns or changed the form they took. Day in and day out, every single day, one test after another. I'm still surprised they didn't try to dissect me. The look they gave me whenever one of them touched my skin. How could I forget it? Reeling from the pain, like I was a monster or something. Some existence, huh? A blight on any I touched. Helplessly complicit in their pain. I thought things couldn't get any worse, but then they did. I started to have nightmares, visions of the coming apocalypse. <sighs> Is it any wonder I lacked a cheery disposition? Unable to so much as touch another soul. Loneliness was my best friend. Sure, I survived, but with the knowledge that one day I'd be swallowed up by oblivion. And that's when it hit me. If I was going to die, then it should mean something. If I have to sacrifice myself to save the world, so be it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you relive that. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm in a much better place now. You say it's your destiny to die so that others can live. But why not the other way around? Why shouldn't we be the ones dying to save you? Uh, are you crazy? Why would you sacrifice your life for... That's exactly my point. Why should you have to give up your life just because you drew the short straw in the destiny stakes? How is that even right? It's that logic that's used to justify slavery, as if some of us were just meant to be sacrificed. This struggle was never about saving only ourselves. But that doesn't mean we have to give up our own lives to save everyone else's either. If we're doing this to protect people, if we're doing this to save the world from destruction, then that has to include saving each other as well. A world free of sacrifice. That's what you've been fighting for all along, isn't it? Not just me. We're in this together, remember? This fight is yours too, Xion. If we're going to win, everyone has to win. There can be no room for losers in this fight. Now I see it. The true nature of our struggle. 
A victory without losers. But that means that a Danon victory over Rena can't be the end. Do you think we can pull it off? You bet we can pull it off. We have to. It's the only hope we have of things ever changing. Yeah, you're right. No one's ever changed the future without aiming for the stars. We can do this together. I'm sorry. I am constantly dead silent in these scenes. They're so good. I'm so invested in these characters' growth. It's so good. We'll seize our future by our own hands. Hell yeah. God damn it. I fucking love these guys. All right, Dohlein. What's the problem? Is everyone about ready? We'll soon be making preparations to land. Before we do that, just what exactly should we expect when we get down there? Yes, please tell me, what's, what's Lenigus like? Kisara has a point. Now that I think of it, I don't know the first thing about Lenigus. I'd like to hear more too. It's been centuries since I was last there, and they didn't exactly give me the grand tour. Very well. First and foremost, Lenigus is... was the base of operations in charge of the crown contest on Dana. Of course, it also happens to be a city in its own right. Complete with its own independent society. Its social structure is based on a strict hierarchy. Put simply, the strength of an individual's astral arts carries great weight. Okay. Enough to determine someone's social rank, you mean? But astral arts are innate, right? So people's positions are fixed at birth. They can be honed with the right training, and there are admittedly other factors at play. But yes, that's basically the gist. As a result, family lines that churn out lords and their contenders wield disproportionate influence, and those lineages are treated as nobility. Those capable of only weak astral arts are effectively an underclass, denied the right to descend to Dana even if they wanted to. Okay. So, even the lowest rung on the Renan ladder is considered superior to being a Danon. Keep that in mind down there. Thanks for the warning. As a lord, Dohalim must have been pretty high up in the pecking order, right? What about you, Shion? Come on, you've seen her skill with astral arts. You really need to ask? I think she was low. <laughs> Fair point. On arts alone, you're right. I'd have been sitting pretty. But you're forgetting my thorns. They weren't exactly an invitation to high society. Uh, sorry. No, it's fine. It's refreshing to be around someone who says what they're thinking. Life's less complicated that way. Jeez, give backhanded compliments much? Wait a second. Are you? He is! Law's blushing! Ah! I am not! <laughs> <laughs> of course, separating people into castes based on something arbitrary like arts is discrimination at its worst. As if such simplistic criteria could ever be a measure of someone's worth. So this red woman, are we expecting to find her on Lenigus? I would wager so. Lenigus is too deeply involved in all this to discard the possibility. Chances are she's also connected to the Renis Alma being stolen from us in Pelegian. If the Renis Alma is being used to exploit Dana, we need to take it back at all costs. That red woman's got a lot to answer for. Just as well, I've got a ton of questions. Yeah, me too. Like, first off, why do you have demon eyes? Are you a demon? We're about to land. The descent could be a little bumpy, so brace yourselves. Now that I think about it, shouldn't the Renans have like a an entire fleet blockading their entire planet defense system? Are we not gonna have difficulty just waltzing in as usual? I see. You know what? That's pretty much the stick of all the things we've been doing in this entire adventure. We just waltz in, kill their strongest leader, and then we leave without elaborating further. That's how we're gonna do Polenicus too. If there are clues about your thorns out there, Shion. We'll find them. All right, let's see what this place is all about. Oh my god, it looks like the Death Star. A little bit. A puffier version of it. Alright. No welcoming committee committee. 
There's no one here. I wasn't expecting a welcome mat, but still. Lenigus's infrastructure is largely automated. Besides, people won't be expecting incoming traffic while the crown contest is still underway. I mean, what the fuck? How is the crown contest still going on? All the Renner Lords are dead. Do you think anyone realizes that we're here? We may not have received a royal welcome, but I doubt our entrance went unnoticed. Don't let your guard down. I really hope we don't have to fight anybody while we're here. So now what? We've come all this way on a hunch that this red woman is here, right? And if we're lucky, the Renis Alma too. Any idea where we should start looking? Hmm. It's gotta be a tall building here of some kind. Like a center, as usual. There is an area of the city that is accessible only to the Sovereigns, known as the Forbidden Zone. That seems as good a place as any for us to start. Forbidden? What are they hiding? I don't know, hence my desire to find out. Fortunately, we just so happen to have a Sovereign in our midst. Ah. In any case, changing the shape of a huge structure such as Lenigus would have required an immense source of power. Oh yeah, that's right, this whole, this whole giant thing is Lenigus, apparently. And you think that source might have been the Renis Alma? Precisely. Alfin said that he remembered the Renis Alma being used in the spirit channeling ceremony three centuries ago. Whatever the ceremony's purpose, if preparations are underway for it to be held once more, then the Renis Alma might be in the same place as last time, possibly together with the Red Woman. All right, let's just head on over there. Hiding something of that worth in the residential quarters would only court trouble. In which case... It stands to reason we should be looking somewhere normally out of bounds. Is that it? Indeed. But it's been over 300 years since I was made a sovereign. You can't seriously think I'll be able to waltz right into the place after all this time. There's only one way to find out. If there's even a chance you can get us in, I say we give it a shot. Xion's right. Who knows? We might even find a clue to her thorns while we're at it. Alright. It's not like we're swimming in leads, so let's try to track down the Forbidden Zone. Members who've left have returned to your party. All right. Beyond that wall lies a city full of Renans. The capital city where Shion and Dohalim used to live, no less. Who knows what we'll find on the other side. Okay, so we can actually go to Lenicus now. Sweet. We're finally here, guys. The good old Renan homeworld. At least, well, yeah. And there's Dan, I believe. Jesus Christ. Tales has, has gone a really long way. I don't think we've ever gone to a, another planet in the Tales game. I don't think we have. Not in Tales of Assyria, not in fucking the other Tales games that I haven't played. None. This is probably the first one we've gone to space in, at least as far as I know. Don't quote me on that. Anyways, I think that's a perfect time to end this episode off. The perfect view of... Dana. Anyways guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this episode of Tales of Arise. If you did and would like to see more, please be sure to leave a like and a comment down in the comment section. And if you haven't already, I would like for you to leave a subscribe. That would make me a very happy person. And I promise you all that this Ethereum will be around for the next episode. Until we meet again guys, I bid you all a fun farewell.